Partnerships and Clinical Trials is a meeting I've been coming to for several years. My name is Jeff Kasher. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Innovation and Implementation at Eli Lilly and Company. I'm very, very passionate about patient centricity in our business. At the end of the day, what we do is we develop medicines to help people live longer, healthier, more active lives. So it's about the patients. We should put the patient at the center of everything we do. And I have a strong belief that if we put the patient at the center of everything we do in terms of how we view things, more times than not, we will get things right. So what are some of the examples of things we're doing at Lilly? Uh, a few. Um, right now, a lot of people go to clin clinicaltrial.gov to get their information about clinical trials. Uh, if you've ever gone out there, it is not user-friendly at all. So what we've done with our Lilly Clinical Open Innovation Group is develop an API which every day brings the clintrial.gov data into a site where it is available in a much more user-friendly format. So people can do cuts of the data, they can look at graphics of the data. We're extending that because it's an open API, other companies have availed themselves of it. Uh, and one of the things that we're communicating very recently is we're working with Pfizer and Novartis to work on a trial matching system for patients, taking advantage of this open API. Um, other things we've done, we've engaged with patient groups to get input in our trials. We've worked with smart patients, for instance, to get input from patients with breast cancer to help us design our trials for breast cancer. Uh, we've brought in patient groups, advocacy groups and patients to listen to them, to understand what we need to do differently, what we need to do better. And one last thing we did, which was really pretty cool, uh, last year we put a challenge post out and we put a redacted protocol uh, and a redacted uh, informed consent document out there and we opened it up to the world and said, this is how it went out. Um, how would you redesign this so it's more more friendly to the patient, more patient-centric. And we got some phenomenal feedback, some phenomenal uh, responses came in, and we put that over out under a Creative Commons license, which allows anybody to go out there and utilize that information. We're using it as we're trying to be more patient-centric in the design of our studies, uh, but I know other companies are, are freely using it, and we're glad about that. Adaptive clinical trials give us an opportunity to reduce the number of patients who are exposed to uh, minimally efficacious doses, non-efficacious doses, or doses in trials where we have safety concerns. So we're clearly moving in a direction where we want to run more of our trials in an, in an adaptive manner. Now, scientifically elegant, conceptually sounds simple, operationally it's challenging, okay? And that's what we're trying to work through right now as are many companies in the pharma industry. Um, another topic that comes up quite often is What's the physician's role in clinical trials? Um, right now in the United States, only 4% of physicians participate in clinical trials. How do we increase that participation? We'd like to get to the point where every physician could become an investigator in a clinical trial. One of the things we need to do is raise the awareness of, in, of physicians about clinical research and also engage them more in the design of our studies. We want to engage patients more in the design of the studies, but how do we design our trials so that a physician can actually accommodate this protocol within their daily practice. It's one thing to talk about engaging patients. Uh, people will always ask the question, of how do you measure it? How do you quantitate it? Uh, one measure which I, I think is, is really, really nice and really succinct is we are measuring the percent of our protocols that get approved that have input from patients before they're approved. So very straightforward metric, did the team reach out, get input from patients in the design of that trial before they initiated it? Doesn't mean they're always gonna accept all the recommendations of patients, but the important thing is we're reaching out, we're listening, we're understanding, and you know, at the end of the year, if we approve uh, you know, 50 trials, Let's see how many of those we had patient input and make it very visible to our organization that this is something that's important. When we start talking about patient centricity, uh, we have to remember that when we interact with sites, it's Lilly and our strategic CRO partners that are interacting with sites and ultimately with patients. 
Uh, I have to say that most of the drive for engaging with patients is coming from the pharma company. It's coming from us versus the CRO. Uh, we want that we want to start that relationship with patients. We're the ones who are developing medicines at the end of the day for those patients. So nothing should be more central to our business than engaging with the patients. The CROs are our key partner. Their main interface is with the research site. Uh, they clearly understand and are embracing this, this shift in paradigm, if you will. But truth be told right now, the biggest push is coming from the pharma company. One of the biggest changes that we've seen uh, come into clinical research in the past few years is the movement to wearable devices and the whole quantifiable self movement. Um, if, as an example, at the partnership meeting, um, Lilly, along with um, the partnership organization and a couple other companies, uh, hosted a challenge post, uh, which uh, we awarded, uh, we're going to award a company uh, a prize, and the challenge was put out there, how do we come up with an application, with an app, that will engage, empower, uh, and encourage patients to be more active in clinical trials. So you're seeing a lot of movement in the whole app space. Uh, the thing that I think is really, really cool is the whole movement to wearable devices. Um, you're seeing these things just take off, whether they be your Fitbit, uh, your fuel band that looks at your mobility, your sleep patterns. There are 12K, 12 lead EKG devices out there that have Wi-Fi connections uh, into computers. Um, all kinds of things are being measured right now. Um, glucose in your tears. Um, came out from uh, Google about a month ago. So what those devices enable is for companies in their trials to collect data in a non-invasive manner, in a real-world setting, and collect volumes of data that are here to, up till this point have been unprecedented. It also provides, I think, a really nice safety, uh, increase in safety over, oversight of patients in that we're we can't lose sight of the fact that we're talking about investigational drugs. So we're still trying to understand the benefit, the risk, the adverse event profile. And by having some of the devices uh, on people, so to speak, 24-7, if we see certain signals, we're able to communicate to those folks via text message or other means and say, hey, have you taken your med? Or hey, we're seeing this. Why don't you go see your site or uh, your physician right now? Yeah, about five years ago, we made a major move to go to functional sourcing. We consolidated from over 50 um, vendors around the globe to about three. Um, we're well into it now. Overall, I would give it a double thumbs up. It's worked very well. Uh, we've realized the economic savings that we thought we would realize. Uh, we've also seen a uh, maintenance of the quality that we expect and require in our clinical trials. Uh, and I think, that, you know, in large part, it's been to the fact that we've established very strong partnerships with some really great uh, TPOs. So overall, very, very positive. Uh, several years ago, Lilly did get, get religion over our quality system. Uh, we had challenges from several different audits. And we stepped back and we said, we need to overhaul our quality system. So we put a new quality system in place. We put new training in place. Uh, what we've seen is uh, an improvement when we look at our audits. Um, we've we've come to realize a couple things, though. When it when it comes time to when when it comes to quality, quality culture is a journey. Okay, you don't get there overnight. You don't get there by putting out some new standards and some new procedures. People really have to understand quality and get to the point where quality and design is the mindset of the organization. So I'd say we're still on that journey. We're looking to improve the, the nature of the training we provide to our people. And we're also looking to continuously um, refine and, and simplify our quality system as we go forward. Excellent, excellent. I had the opportunity to participate in the executive forum uh, day one at the clinical partnerships meeting. Uh, and it was, it was an enjoyable day. Uh, 
a lot of good dialogue. Um, you know, it, it was a mix of people I knew and know very well and some people I hadn't met before, so I enjoyed the opportunity to interact with, uh, with new colleagues. Um, some very temporal topics were put on the table. Um, some good give and take, some good debate, uh, very candid discussion, um, some very memorable quotes in there that will, well, I guess we are in Vegas, so what, what uh, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, I would encourage others to, to go to the forum. It was, uh, it was instructive. Uh, it challenged my thinking a little bit, and um, I, I took away uh, a good bit. Partnerships in Clinical Trials is a meeting I've been coming to for several years. Uh, I actually missed the forum last year. Uh, a lot of reasons I enjoy coming to the, to the event. Um, one, from a, a selfish standpoint, in, in a few short days it allows me to connect with all of my key um, CRO partners. Uh, I also get to catch up with a lot of uh, old friends, colleagues. Um, discuss some of the challenges uh, that we're uh, sharing in a mutual uh, manner. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet new people. It's an opportunity to learn some new things in terms of what's going on in the industry. Uh, always a good opportunity to meet with some new vendors and uh, see what kinds of uh, new capabilities might be emerging. So uh, I view it as, some, as a meeting that I uh, religiously put on my calendar. Uh, because I want to make sure I'm there and uh, uh, stay current, so to speak, with what's going on in our industry.